Hey everybody, happy new year, how's it going? We should just cut right to the chase. You've seen the episode title for episode 75, titled Final Podcast Fat Boy with a question mark. So I'm going to give you the lowdown on that, but yes, this is the final podcast, Fat Boy. This is the last time we will be doing the podcast, Fat Boy Brand. Episode 75, we're capping it at 75 episodes. But the podcast isn't going away, it's just going through a rebrand. We're saying goodbye to Podcast Fat Boy, and we're saying hello to something else to the, the final phase of this podcast that will exist as long as this podcast tends to be. So anyway, let's get into this show. Let's play this Podcast Fat Boy theme one last time. Who's a fat boy? And there it goes. That is the last episode of the podcast that you will hear it. If you want to hear that theme ever again, you got to listen to those first 75. It'll always be there. This will always be a part of this caterpillar turning into this butterfly, which is the new phase of the podcast. I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Adam Kennedy for making the theme music all those years ago. Uh, the man, the mystery, you know him. Aaron Dawkins, Gawkin Dawkins from Supernatural Season 4. Apparently they changed the last name. That's still There's still a conspiracy around that. Don't understand that at all. You might also know him as Skateboarder Number 2 from the cult classic Final Draft, a.k.a. Punchy, which was the original title, Punchy, which is the clown in Final Draft. You got to check it out. I'm sorry there are no reviews on Rod Tomatoes for Final Draft, it did not get that many eyes. But people have seen it, and those some people got it. Some people got it. Okay, I don't think Adam did. I don't think he liked it too much. I don't think he liked what they did with his dialogue too much. But when we get him on, because he's coming back for Keswick Comic Con to do a Final Draft panel, but no one's showing up, just him, skateboard number two, we can get him to talk more about it, reminisce, since it's been, you know, 15 years or more since he shot it. But yeah, thanks to Adam for doing the, you know, call it like astro, astro pop funk brand of music that he does. I told him what I wanted, what I originally wanted with the podcast, what I wanted the vibe to be, and he gave me what I wanted. It was great. A lumbering figure in the woods eating burgers and pizza. That's what I get when I hear it. But you know, I stopped this podcast for two years. We rebooted it around the time that Trump took office. No correlation there. It just happened to be what was happening at the time five years ago. We're about at the five-year anniversary of the reboot. But you know, I never really sat with me to continue on under the same moniker, the same podcast, Fat Boy, logo, the same vibe, you know, you know, like the vibe's not going to change really. I'm still going to be doing the same shit. I just want to change the brand a little bit because I think I've found more my way with where I want it to be. And that is not where it was originally, you know, you know, originally I was only talking to guests. Originally I had a, a, a friend who was doing his PhD and was going to be like my kind of personal trainer who would, who would check in but I haven't talked to Alex in probably like eight years. I don't know if I've seen him since that day that he recorded. And he is now, yes, a Dr. Alex Schwartz. So I will thank Alex for starting. This is my first ever podcast, right? My first ever one. So it'll always be special to me to to have that and to, you know, as my wife made the logo when she was starting out. So it's, it's all, you know, a, a moment in time that I'm going to cherish. But this is the last episode for that, and we are going to move forward with a new podcast. Now, you will notice in your podcatchers that the logo and the name will change to Come Lose It with 
Matt Duncan. Come lose it with Matt Duncan. That is the new one. I've got the new logo ready to go. And it's just more what this podcast has become. You know, it's like, yes, it's still, I'm still giving you the health news. I'm still giving you the fitness update. We're still talking about losing weight and all the fitness goofy stuff, but I'm also losing my fucking mind. I'm also losing my mind as the time goes on. And that's why I start talking about all the other shit that's driving me nuts and crazy. And it's the stuff you want to talk about and lose your mind a bit. You want to put on that lipstick, that Joker lipstick, and you want to just start smacking your head like a like a chimpanzee high on meth. That is where we are at now with this podcast. To think where it started... And not to say I'm not going to still have guests on uh, time to time. Still would like to do that. But we're going to move forward in this new phase. We're not going to have the goofy, lumbering uh, music. We're going to just keep it chill, just play a little hip-hop, whatever. You know, just something to move us through instead of uh, the intense, uh, <laughs> like, what was it? Uh, honey, I, honey, I blew up the kid. I, I feel like I picture that kid. When he's reached his, you know, Godzilla height, just uh, booming through a city to the podcast Fatboy thing. So thank you, Adam, for that. And thank you to my wife, of course. And, you know, the other thing I'll say before we move on to some other stuff, I've got a lot of stuff I want to talk about for this last episode, but because it's not the last episode, you know what I mean? It's just like of this brand, you know, we're saying goodbye to it. We're saying goodbye to it together. And moving forward with Come Lose It. But I also, you know, we live in a a little more sensitive uh, type of a world now. And, you know, I think fat people are constantly mistreated. And I'm kind of worried that no one's going to get the joke of Podcast Fat Boy, the name of it. Because I'm not trying to fat shame. I'm trying to find a different, too much of a complicated way to to be okay with your body. I think that's what I originally wanted with it, you know, and to use me as the butt of the joke. So other people wouldn't feel so bad about their body. That is really what I want it to be, but I don't think it's really coming through to me anymore. I'm not, I just woke up one morning and I, my head popped off the pillow and I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling, I guess I haven't been for a while, but you know, it taken it, you know, we, we, we rebooted, we went to CBS, the Charlie Bucket studio where I was just kind of ranting to my mic on my phone. And now we're, we're, we're using the good mic. We're using the mixer. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the effects in all live as we go. You know, this is the, this is where, I, where I'm happiness. And I don't know what will become of this. Maybe I will start pushing it out again. Maybe I'll get social media going again. I don't know, but I feel better about doing it with a rebrand than, you know, the same old thing that I started with my, my little baby. It's my little baby, but my little baby, it's a caterpillar that's turned into a butterfly. So with that being said, thank you for those who have been along for those 75 episodes as the PF logo and vibe and journey. Uh, well, let's continue. Let's continue on. Let's, uh, we'll still talk about losing some weight, but we're also going to talk about, you know, losing some mind. We're going to lose a little mind because we're two years into a pandemic and I'm getting, I'm getting a different kind of itch, you know, like I feel like my mind is starting to seep out the back of my head. Like there's a hole that's been forming and I didn't realize that it was happening and it's gotten bigger. And now my mind is seeping out of that little hole it's kind of where I'm at right now, where I am possibly turning to the Joker, you know? So, you know, if this is going to be used in court one day, at least it'll be good quality. <laughs> no, no, everything's cool. Everything's cool, guys. Don't worry. You know, so where do we go from here? Uh, you know, I always like to talk about New Year's resolutions now that we're into, you know, this is a health fitness podcast. I know people hate them. I know people think they're stupid. They have worked for me couple, you know, I've cut out sugar and coffee many, many years ago. I can't even remember now. I think it's been seven years, eight years, no sugar and coffee. That was a big one. That was a huge one. That was maybe one of the only ones I've really stuck to, but you know, I've got, you know, I haven't really done a wrap up of last year, but you know, I've worked out consistently, more consistently than I ever have in my life. Even though I'm not seeing the results maybe that I want, I 
feel strong and I feel good about it. So, and I know I like I have it there now as something to really help me with my anxiety, uh, help me monitor, help me maintain, help me, you know, deal with attacks that happen even when they do happen still, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm just better equipped and I'm not looking at physical activity so much as a drag. I'm not like, I'm not dreading having to work out and stuff. It's just, I'm also not like the person that's like, I don't know how anyone doesn't work out all the time. I'm, I'm not like that either. I love to have a lay. Listen to me now. I love to have a lay in the bed and just sit there and watch the uh, binge watch and all that stuff. But it is, I'm proud of that change that I've made. So fitness wise, I'm not going to make too many resolutions. I would like to cut out sweets. I think I'm getting a little crazy with that. I would like to watch portion control and like to get that down. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm, you know, I'm playing with the idea again of, of maybe going back to the five, two lifestyle. And I don't want to call it a diet because if I'm going to do it, then I want to commit to it as a lifestyle. And really, yes, you are kind of starving yourself for a couple of days in the week. Two of the days you're having like 500 calories. That's not a lot. It's not good for you. Uh, If you're doing it every day, you'd be anorexic. So, but I do think it's not so bad from the research that I've done. And hey, I, as always, do your own, do what works for you. But I feel like You know, it's something that could really help get my metabolism going a little bit. And as well, if I can get more used to having a 500 calorie day, then I won't be gorging so much on the other days. Like I might just have a 2000 calorie day, like I'm supposed to or whatever, you know, and not like, oh, wow, 2800 or whatever. It's so easy to get them cows in there, you know, and I'm approaching my 40s now, you know, like I got to kind of, I got to nip this in the bud now because the older you get, the harder it is to lose weight. And, you know, it's like my mom, my mom just talking to her today. She's just like, Oh, I want to (laughs) lose. She's like, I want to lose 46 pounds. (laughs) She's, she's not even that big. It's just, she's had a, obviously a thing with her weight her whole life. Um, probably passed it down to me, the worry that I'm starting to realize now and obsession and, the, the body dysmorphia that I've dealt with, I guess, since I was about 10, at least, um, you know, it, it, she's in her mid sixties now. It, it's just, that's a, that's a steep order. It's a really steep order to, to <laughs> want to do. It's going to take a long time. So, you know, uh, I, I like that she's, she's excited to do it. She's having some health issues right now. So, you know, just hopefully, everything can work itself out. So she's able to get back on track. Um, yeah, you know, I think that's, that's it for the open chair. Again, thanks. Thanks for being a, a part of this. I know it's been a bit of a weird journey. I think if you listen one through 75 back to back, it'd be quite a weird adventure, it'd be a weird adventure for sure. But overall it's something I enjoy to do. And I do try to put a little bit of work into it so that it's, enjoyable for you as well. And maybe at the very least, you know, you, you, there's something that makes you go and, and, and want to learn about something, uh, even if it's stupid, uh, has to do with farts or fitness, whatever, F- farts and fitness. That's what we all are about <laughs> on this podcast. Or also maybe you just want to catch up on one of your favorite actors because you heard it was their birthday today. Not a gra- this is going to continue. Don't you worry. Okay, we're giving our shout outs because everybody needs a birthday shout out in this miserable, miserable world we live in right now. Okay, so we got Lynn Manuel Miranda. It's 41. I don't know much about him other than the, the Hamilton thing. You know, it, uh, I'll give you bonus points if you notice him in a very small role in The Sopranos playing like, uh, like a valet dude, which he actually, very small role. But it was funny. I don't think it was really supposed to be. Maybe it was. But, you know, he threw Polly off a little bit, and I thought that was hilarious. Uh, he's 41. Haven't seen Hamilton, and there's a part of me that never does want to see Hamilton. Uh, don't at me. John Carpenter 
74, director of Halloween, most famously. Um, I think he did The Thing as well, one of my favorite horror movies. Really describes what's going on right now, The Thing, you know. I think that was him. Did watch a brief interview that he did when he was making Halloween, and he really doesn't respect any of the big directors, and it sounded like a guy that was just pissed that he was operating on such a shitty budget. Because I don't know, man, Spielberg and Robert Altman, and, you know, I, I can't say they're bad filmmakers. I, You know, maybe he's changed his mind since 1978. I don't freaking know. But he, he's still alive. I can't keep track of all my horror directors. I've talked too long about John Carpenter. God bless him. Happy birthday. <laughs> Uh, Alyssa Edwards, one of my favorite drag queens of RuPaul's Drag Ways, is 41. Uh, Alyssa Edwards, if you haven't watched any of her seasons, she's funny, but I don't think she really knows it. She's one of those people that is like accidentally funny while trying to do something else. And it, she's just uh, hilarious to watch in drag and out of drag. Very different person. Um, who else we got? Not a hot day. I'm not going to lie, guys. Oh, I'm, I'm following this site. It's got like YouTube stars and TikTok stars. That's like, that makes me sick. I can't, I can't give those people some happy birthdays. Even though I'll, I'll give you a, a blank one. I'll give you a, you know, a broad one. But uh, let's go back to Kate Moss. She's 47. Wow. Heroin chic. Remember heroin chic? Kate Moss. That's her girl. And she... Still alive. Thank God she cut that Pete dude, Pete Wentz, loose because they did not look good. It did not look like a, a healthy union if you you catch my drift. Um, who else we got? We got here. You know, I'm not. Debbie Allen, you know, she's famous ma- mainly for producing fame. You know, remember fame, the show? I didn't really watch it. I think uh, David Chukachi. He's 54. Just by looking at him, looking at his headshot, I'm going to say he was on Baywatch. I think he was on Baywatch. I'm not going to check it, though. And uh, Ethel Merman would have been like 104 or something. 114? Ethel Merman. She died when I was born. So maybe I'm Ethel Merman, baby. Yep, it's me. Fitness update. Okay, I'll give you a quick fitness update. Uh, what is going on in my world here? I have been... Uh, okay, so you, you guys know I rock the Apple Watch, and the Apple Watch has all kinds of badges and stuff that pop up for you to earn. And this, you know, it happened last year, and I didn't do it right, but if you start the month with seven straight days where you close all your rings, your fitness rings and your movement and everything else, you get a badge. I did not get it last year, and I was pissed because I like just thought you could do any seven days in the month anyway. I stuck to it, but then I also worked out on the 31st, so I had to do eight straight days, and it was pretty rough for me. I, I, I do need a rest day in there. I can work out four or five times a week, but I do need to mix it up a little bit with the rest day, okay? So anyway, got that. I'm also trying... Apple Fitness Plus, free month of it, which is their own Peloton classes, which aren't live, but they upload new ones all the time, and they have all the different ones you can do. Bike, you can do yoga, high-intensity training, you can, you know, everything. So I've only done it a few times, and (laughs) this is the problem. It's like, I don't know. Fitness classes, I just can't really stick with. So I'm going to try and do some more. Seem to be, they're, they're corny and weird to me. They're just... You know, it's it's so corny. I don't know. I kind of like doing my own thing and just watching something, you know, and losing losing my mind that way. But I'm going to try a few more. It's, it seems to be pretty positive. And key, the integration with your watch and the Apple TV and everything is kind of nice to see. So I'll, I'll give it another shot. But I don't know if I'm going to pay 12 13 bucks a month for it. Because, you know, all these subscription things, they're going up. Netflix just is going up out of nowhere now. What the fuck is that? Netflix used to, like, give you a couple months where they would say, like, hey, we're going to raise the prices, and now they're freaking out 
because of all these other streaming services that are their competition, they ain't a monopoly anymore. So they're fucking, we got to pay to pro- produce all this shit. We should all get a credit. We should all get a fucking credit in Riverdale. God damn it. This is so ridiculous. But anyway, so I'm, I'm doing the Apple Fitness. I'm watching my subscriptions. I'm also doing something called a Derby Plank Challenge. Now, I have talked about Derby before in the past. It is a free site, and you can go and like pick whatever ones you want. They've got a million different ones. But it, it's just like every day you have an exercise that you have to do. And then, then every, you know, it increases more and more. I will post a link in the show notes for it if you are into it as well. I'm doing this plank one right now and you know, it does get hard. So it says to split up and make sets because it's like at the end of the month, it'll be like four minutes. That's a long time to hold a plank for me. Like I'm shaking. I'm like, (laughs) it's not, it's not cute. I'm all my other uh, muscles in my body start compensating and I start to hurt myself. I've been dealing with this neck issue now for about a month I don't know what the fuck I did, but then I think I've been rubbing it like crazy too. So it's like, it's just been on, it's been overkill. It's been, I've been like hurting myself trying to rub, rub whatever this is out of my neck. It doesn't really hurt. Just kind of feels weird when I swallow. It's like a contraction's happening on my right side. But now the last few days I have not been touching it. And I put on a TENS machine, you know, those like kind of like Dr. Ho pads that you put on your body. Those I got, I got to recommend make the investment. It is very good. And I'm always like, my wife's big into it. And I'm always like, eh, I don't know. I'll just wait for a massage, but it seemed to really help. So anyway, that seems to be on the upswing. Thank God. Cause I hate shit like that. That's just annoying, you know, uh, not really painful, but annoying. Anyway, try not to overcompensate when I'm working out making sure that the muscles that I'm targeting, I'm using. And if I'm, you know, I'll give you a little old trainer, Matt thing. If, if you're, if you're doing a bicep curl or anything and you feel your back tightening up and your chest and you're swinging and you can't get it up, just lower the weight. It doesn't matter who gives a shit, just lower the weight so that you can just focus on the muscle you are trying to target because you will hurt yourself. Trust me, trust me on that. And the last thing with the fitness update, I will say, I am, I know I've talked about this before, but I do have a sticker uh, counter that I keep on, on my calendar for, you know, when I drink, when I smoke weed, when I take edibles, when I have a bender night, there's a sticker for that now. Now a bender, I, I classify as three drinks at least. If I have three drinks or more, that's a bender. Because, you know, if you have three drinks a day, Every day, they say that you're an alcoholic. So those are the bender ones. I did have a bender one on Friday. Now listen, I'm not ready to talk about why. It was a bit of a rough fucking week. Ended like shit. But I will talk about it probably on the first episode of Come Lose It because it got a little testy. It got a little testy in my life the last few days. It's been a testy weekend, let me just say. So anyway... I've got all this stuff going, you know, I got lots on the go. I'm trying to stay focused and happy and everything else. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, just, just do your best and don't be so, gives a shit. We're just trying to get through all this, right? Health news. News that is health related. Okay. So I got two things to talk about in health news. Now we'll talk about this. This is related to a a new year's resolution type of thing. And I haven't really paid much attention to this over the last few years. It's apparently been going on since about 2013, but millennials and Gen Z are apparently driving January's comeback of a dry January. Uh, So I don't know why I said January's comeback. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> January is in need of a comeback. So let's have a dry January. No, um, this is apparently happening. You know, people are drinking too much in the pandemic. I've gone through spurts of it. That's, you know, obviously why in the last four or five months, I've just been trying to track and see how much I am drinking. Am I having a casual one every couple of days or am I having a bender? So I, I'm not trying to have a dry January but I am trying to monitor more. And I feel like if I put a, a no booze blues sticker, which means I don't drink at all, no booze blues. And of course it's the color blue. If I put that one on at the beginning of the day, then I'm not going to drink. 
that night because it's like in my mind that's like, nope, this is a sober day. I think it works. You know, you might want to try it out. You might want to try it out. So yeah, it seems like the, you know, the baby boomers, the older generations, they are drinking a lot more than us now. We're not drinking as much. It, it's been going down. It's becoming, you know, more hipster to to be uh, sober. I feel like there's a lot of people that I know that weren't alcoholics, but they just like did the same thing as like, if I were to quit drinking and, you know, they, they monitor it like they're two years sober or whatever like that. And I do think that that is a hard thing to do. I, I think it can be just as hard as someone that is chronically addicted to alcohol. So, you know, it's because it's such a social thing, you know, it's, it's a thing that, you know, it, it should be, there should be warning labels on all booths. Like I was reading an article somewhere just about how like it's, it's such a huge contributor to cancer and how like we have our cigarettes and our weed and everything with all these, <laughs> with all these warnings, alcohol should have it too. It's so crazy. Like alcohol is, ugh, alcohol is so bad, but it's just so much good money for the government. You know, you don't want to fuck up daddy. You don't want to upset daddy. So the dry, dry January is going on. If you are doing it, uh, fantastic. I'm going to try and, and limit it myself, but that's pretty much all I'm going to do. The next thing I want to talk about is how <laughs> you heard me mention weed, but I was, uh, there was a Bloomberg article that came out saying that cannabis compounds prevented COVID infection in laboratory study. Now, I'm not saying to be a goddamn anti-vaxxer. You know, you know my position on this podcast? I'm getting my booster on Tuesday, for goddamn sakes. Okay, I'm a pro-vaccine person. I'm not trying to come at you with some pseudoscience, but I find it pretty interesting if there were a couple of compounds in weed that are apparently preventing COVID. Oh, you know, maybe that's why I haven't noticeably gotten sick yet from, you know, the... CBGA or CBDA, whatever those compounds are, apparently are, you know, they did a test and it worked, but you know, who knows? I'm not saying it's, I don't think the CDC is going to be saying to uh, start smoking blunts anytime soon, but it's just a nice little thing to be like, oh, you know, I've kind of worried at times of like, oh, I don't want to smoke weed or anything because I don't want to fuck up my lungs too much in case I get COVID because it attacks your lungs. But you know, for the most part, I've been really enjoying these uh, edibles, but I haven't had any yet this year. I've only had, my mom gave me some CBD gummies from the reserve near her, where she lives, and I felt pretty fucked up on it. Like, I didn't feel stoned, but I definitely, I don't know. It, it was said it was 25 milligrams, and that, that could, that, if it was THC, that'd be a lot for me. But for CBD, I thought like, oh, she said, she didn't really feel these, but I tell you, I definitely felt something weird and I was a little anxious, so I didn't really enjoy it. But now I know that I can survive it and, you know, I've got a bag of them, so might as well throw a couple and see what happens. <laughs> but, you know, the CBD thing, don't know if it really works. Sometimes I feel like it does. Sometimes I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, you know, making it up in my mind. You know, it doesn't, I don't need much with this brain because you know what this brain is? It's on fire. Let me tell you something. My brain is on fucking fire. So I don't need much. I don't need much kindling. Let me tell you that. Um, yeah, I think that's... You smell that? It smells like shit. Okay, other shit. Well, this is the place where we can come to lose our fucking mind a little bit, just to the craziness, the craziness of the fucking world and what we're living in here. Uh, you know, j just as a reminder, this came across my feed the other day. If, you know, if you forgot, I used to live in Toronto. We used to have a mayor named Rob Ford. And when he was in power as the mayor of Toronto in City Hall doing a press conference right outside his office, this is something that he said publicly to the reporters years before he died. Yes. Well, and the last thing was um, Olivia Gonda. It, it says that I wanted to eat her pussy, Olivia Gonda. I've never said that in my life to her. I would never do that. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Yes. Yes. He was in power. He wasn't running for mayor. He wasn't uh, when he was a counselor or, you know, before he got into politics. This is what he said when he was the mayor of the biggest city in Canada. And I bring it up because, you know, his brother is the premier, a.k.a. for American listeners, the governor of Ontario. And uh, he is making me lose my mind. And I went through a phase of trying to get those tests and everything else. And the holidays were a real worry for me because of this fucking idiot. And I just sometimes have to reminisce about his brother. And some people were actually saying like, oh, I wish Rob Ford was alive to deal with this. Could you imagine if Rob was in power right now? Oh my God. It'd be scary to have his brother as the premier and to have him as the mayor. And this is the kind of shit we had to deal with for four years. Him talking about cunnilingus on his wife, plenty at home. That's the mayor. It's just, I still can't believe it. You know, every once in a while I have got to play that just to know that it really happened. Uh, Moving on to some other shit. I saw that a grandmother died of COVID because she picked it up playing cards. This poor grandma, she wants to get out. She's going fucking crazy. She's been through World War II. She's been through fucking Vietnam. She's been through it all. She just wants to play some fucking canasta or whatever with her friends. But one of her friends had COVID, but was a little embarrassed. Didn't want to tell anybody. So you're going to a fucking card game with all these older people and you're not going to tell them that you have COVID? So this poor fucking grandmother got COVID playing cards. Could you imagine? I, I love playing cribbage. What if someone, what if uh, an angel came down and was like, that next game of crib is going to kill you. It's going to fucking kill you. R.I.P. Rest in peace, grandmother. But, you know, you got to be, uh, her friend must feel pretty shitty. If she's coherent, I don't know. They, uh, they were all pretty old. Blackberry has finally bit the dust. I cannot believe that people still use BlackBerry. There are people out there that still use those fucking phones. I never once in my life had any urge to get a BlackBerry phone. Even when my friends, before there was MSN, or before there was Messenger and stuff, there was the one thing was BlackBerry Messenger. Oh, it's so great, the BlackBerry Messenger. It's like, so, so what? And now... Apple just did it and was like, oh, is this what you wanted? Here. And we've been doing it for years. Poor BlackBerry, that little keyboard. It just seems a little silly, okay? To have a a clickety-clackety keyboard like that. Like little baby teeth keyboard. (laughs) They got to use old baby teeth to make the keys. And that's why they had to stop, apparently. I don't know. I think it's dumb. My cousin used to work for them, but now he works for the other Satan company, Amazon. Do you know I'm pro You know, I love my Amazon. You know, I am a dirtbag. But, you know, they're saying that the Apple phone might cease to exist one day. That's going to hurt me. That's going to hurt me. I've, I've had an Apple phone for 13 years. Isn't that insane? 14 years. 13, 14. <laughs> Heavy deaths to start this year. You know, Betty White. Bob Saget. This Bob Saget one is really hidden hard. It's one of those celebrity deaths where it's like, ah, oh, fuck. 65 and he just went in his sleep? Seems like he just went in his sleep. Natural causes, like a fucking cowboy. It's too bad to hear. You know, Betty White was not. No, Betty White, you know, it's tough to make it to that 100. My great-grandmother died at 99. She was wearing too big of shoes, as my mom said. Shoes that didn't fit her, she fell. And it's lights out when you fall at that age. So that killed her. She was a nasty woman, though. Nasty to me. Always wanted me to get braces. But I'm like, I'm not going to get braces with this toonie you keep putting on my card. I mean, I want to up the toonie count if you want me to get braces, Grandma Pelly. Anyway, beautiful life. 99 years. God bless her. And Robert Durst died. I couldn't believe that. The, remember Robert Durst? He, like, Dexter murdered somebody in Texas. He killed someone and chopped them into pieces, put them in garbage bags, and threw them in the ocean. That's a Dexter death. And apparently he did a good job cleaning it up, too. I don't know if he did the whole plastic shin, uh, shimbazzle, shimdoodoo, but he definitely chopped that son of a bitch up. 
and and uh and then yeah he killed his friend and probably his wife but he's on trial right now for more he got convicted robert durst the jinx if you haven't watched it don't you dummy you dummy go watch that that is that is cocaine for true crime right there okay um let's keep moving got a couple more i was going to save some of these but you know what we're going to keep her tight around 40 minutes and that's that's it because this is the final podcast fat boy uh so there's two more things i'll leave you with a little another little thing to play on the last one because made me sick but the the this one i want to talk about here is someone who's my age and is the most successful snake oil salesman to ever walk this fucking planet and i'm proud of her elizabeth Holmes. I have not, I, I, I did not watch the doc on her when it came out, but now that she's been convicted, I had to like go and just like, okay, I got to see what the fuck this, this bullshit was. And she got some rich dudes to, be, to believe in her and give her money and fund this, like just thinking of the huge complex that she had for this thing. And it never worked. It never worked. And she just had to keep, you know, doing sleight of hand to trick people. I just, uh, I'm, she's born in 84. She's 37 years old. I'm so goddamn proud of her. Uh, she's part of the, uh, the, the nasty three of 84, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, her, and I, it's debatable, but I, I believe it's Kim Jong-un. I think he's born in 84. Three very nasty people in three different ways. You know, uh, she's been convicted. She's waiting sentencing and, you know, like, all these fake tests and shit and fucking people's health and lives. Uh, who knows how many people died because of her negligence, but man, what a, she's got these fucking eyes that just, they, they, they feel like if eyes could eat, uh, she has them. They're terrifying. And she's got like a surfer tone in her deep voice. It's just, it's very strange, very strange. And you know, I, I commend her. Because if she, you know what, she's going to go to jail. Yes. Betty Holmes is going to fucking jail. Bet Holmes, jail. You don't think she's going to run shit in jail? You think, you don't think this fucking most successful snake oil salesman in the world is not going to have a cell stocked with cigs to barter shit with? She's going to run that club fed. Let me fucking tell you, don't worry about Betty Holmes. Yeah, she's going to be someone's bitch and she's going to have to chew chew a little cud <laughs> every once in a while, but she's going to run shit there. She wants something. She's going she's gonna to have investors in there. I'm going to write to her. I've got two ideas. I got one for a pill that makes you fly. I think that she'd be good for that because... I can just convince her that it'd be so good for the environment and be so good for the world if we didn't have to use cars and trains and planes. If we could just fly by ourselves, we could fix climate change. And she likes to hold the little vial of the the blood pricker or whatever. (laughs) So it'll just be a little tiny pill, a tiny little pill, like a baby's tooth. (laughs) Just the size of a baby's tooth and you can fly forever. So Betty, if you're listening to this podcast, in club fed because it'll be a nice fucking jail you're going to there's that idea and there's also one i'm done with shitting i don't want to shit anymore so i want to create like a a venting system or there's a contraption that will go into the butthole okay so it'll be a little we'll make it comfortable she'll work on it she'll do the prototype and uh it'll be some kind of vent over it so that there will be no more shitting it'll just turn everything into uh, some kind of 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 a mist or or (laughs) <laughs> or uh you know like a smoke if you want if you if you want to show it off a little bit maybe we'll get more comfortable with it i don't know and you can put different filters in so that when you are shitting your pants this mist coming out it's cotton candy it's uh you know a pumpkin spice latte whatever you whatever you like mint mint you know i'd be a mint fan so that's my other idea now if anybody if i see anyone doing this now that i've mentioned it on the podcast I got to say, this is copywritten. I do have a patent on it. Okay, so this shit vent idea, don't fucking try and, and you know, Winkle Voss twin me or Zucker, but whoever was the shitty one in that situation, don't you fucking dare try to do it because Betty Holmes and I are going to get that fucking shit off the ground. So 
the last thing I'll talk to you, the, the final thing under the podcast fanboy brand before we do the switch to come lose it, before we do the switch, is... <sighs> Do you watch 90 Day Fiance? Do you guys watch that? I don't. I don't. I just know there's one guy named Big Al, and I'm, you know I can't stop looking at him because he's got no neck. He looks like John Leguizamo in Spawn when he's like this clown character. So he's like that character, but without makeup. That's you know for the most part all I know about the show, and it's you know white men trying to marry people in foreign countries or something. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> Pretty disgusting show, but hey, you gotta everyone's gotta do their part. So there is this person that was on the show, I guess, and she has retired from selling farts after a heart attack scare. Okay, she had a heart attack, she had a fart attack scare because she's been jarring her farts and selling them. I made $45,000 in one week selling my jars of farts. And ever since my last TikTok went viral, I've been getting a lot of questions such as, how long do the farts last? Did I really fart 97 times in two days? Who buys my farts and why? And what are some of my tips and tricks? Maybe sick. So the first question I get asked a lot is how long do the farts last? And the smell Ooh. is most prominent for the first two days. But as I like to say, one whiff makes memories that last a lifetime. Yuck. Now, why do people buy my farts in a jar? I honestly think it's because I have a really good personality. What? And also because I'm hot. Now, what are some of my fart selling tips and tricks? Number one, don't eat fiber one bars. Check. You might think it's the no, easy yeah. way out, but Fiber there is bars nothing are garbage. easy about it on its way out. They do <laughs> you make know it hard, I mean. yeah. Yeah, I know you Don't mean. push yourself too hard, literally and figuratively. Just have fun and don't let people judge you or get you down. Mm. It's a business. You're making money and it's not I hurting I think you anyone. should be open to judgment. This holiday season, buy a jar and support local small business. <sighs> Link is in my IG. Thank you guys so much for all of the love and support. It has been seriously overwhelming. Okay. I am getting flooded with DMs with people. Okay, asking. okay, that's about as much. Did everyone? Did you learn how to sell your farts in a jar? What you need to do? You need to have a good personality and you need to be hot, apparently. And then people want to smell methane that you produce in a jar. So she, you know, she's eating the beans. She's eating the fucking eggs and shit. <laughs> and they got a little too much. She thought she was having a heart attack. She was just having gas. She's having fucking gas. She didn't have a heart attack. She didn't have a heart attack. But yeah, she's like getting too much gas. She's going to get like GERD. She's probably, you know, could get acid reflux or something from it. So she had to retire from selling her farts. And, uh, you know, she said, you know, she did protein shakes. And, you know, if you go back to the very beginning of Pockets Fat Boy, Protein Town, we talk about the man, uh, the, the my friend Adam Cauley, who, boy, oh, boy, had some protein shake farts. If he wanted to bottle those up, if he's still cranking that protein powder, go back and listen to that because, boy, he was known for it around circles for his intense gas Anyway, he's a pretty clean cut guy. Hopefully this isn't this doesn't wreck his image too much. <laughs> but uh yeah, I just wanted to leave you with the fart queen. Uh sorry if you are a listener uh here and are a fan of hers and those are, you know, no longer on the market. But, you know, I think the thing that it made me think of the most was I was at the UPS the other day. And there was a woman in front of me and she had packages drop off for UPS, but she also just had Canada Post as well. And she just thought that like, well, I can just take it anywhere. Like they're just all universal. And they have to have signs up now, UPS being like, we don't take Canada Post. We don't take anything. We don't take FedEx. We just take UPS. We're the store is UPS. So this is kind of what this made me think of is like, what's happening to us? Is this is this where we're at? Is this where we're going? Is this, is this progress in the two years of this fucking horrible pandemic? 
because I'm pretty scared that we're all going to start chewing our dicks off and smacking them on our foreheads. <laughs> Let's play that outro one last time. Okay, that's it. This is the last podcast, Fat Boy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening over the years. Thanks for enduring the hiatus. I'll see you next episode. Come lose it with Matt Duncan. See you then.